Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. We are just a week away from Diablo 2 Resurrected, so here's the Amazon guide you guys have been asking for. I should have the Assassin guide very shortly as well, and the Barbarian guide will be cutting it close just before Diablo 2 Resurrected releases. So with that being said, let's get straight into it here. We've got the Amazon guide from Normal Act 1 all the way to Hell Act 5. So whether it is a Javazon, which is the Javelin and Spears Amazon, or the Boson, which is Bows and Crossbows, you should be able to get through the game with my guide here. So when it comes to leveling the Amazon, there is one good bow build and one good Javelin build that I recommend for leveling. There is a hybrid build where you can go both bows and javelins, but honestly, especially for beginners, I recommend just sticking to one or the other. It's really not that big of a deal going hybrid or picking one or the other. It's really based off your preference on what you want to play. Now, if you're interested in bows, the best build is the Mage Zon. The Mage Zon uses elemental damage instead of physical damage, making her less reliant on gear since all of her damage will be coming from her skills instead of her weapon. The Mage Zon starts off with Fire Arrow which deals fire damage to a single target. At level 12 you will unlock Exploding Arrow, an amazing skill that explodes on impact. The explosion never misses and it has decent AoE. Now, in Nightmare, the Mage Zon is going to respec into Freezing Arrow and Immolation Arrow much later on, so that they have both the Cold and Fire skills to deal with immunities in Hell Mode. With the Piercing skill and Piercing from Items, your arrows can explode on a target, continue through them, and then explode again on a second target, basically allowing a single arrow to hit the same group of enemies multiple times. Now, if you're interested in javelins, the best build early on is a mix between Poison Javelin and Power Strike. Poison Javelin deals massive damage and has great AoE potential, while Power Strike simply deals high lightning damage to a single target. You'll want to use Poison Javelin as your main skill, and only switch to Power Strike when you find your Poison Javelin doing little damage to a specific monster or group. At level 18, Javazons will want to respec into Charged Strike for single target damage and then Lightning Fury for AoE damage at level 30. With Piercing from items and your skill, Lightning Fury can easily clear an entire screen of monsters. Charged Strike on the other hand releases Charged Bolts that deal massive lightning damage, allowing you to kill your main target very quickly, as well as also killing neighboring targets with any stray Charged Bolts. Charged Strike can shotgun targets, meaning every charged bolt can hit the same target at once. This is especially useful against bosses, since they are very large targets, and if you can lower their resistance in any way, you will see exactly why parties on multiplayer love having one Javazon around for boss killing. Now some of you might be wondering why I'm not mentioning multi-shot, guided arrow, and strafe when it comes to bosons. This is what I call the physical boson, and honestly it's really not worth going this build until you have some of the best gear in the game. Everyone loves to play multi-shot and guided arrow and strafe, but it's really terrible while you're leveling, and even when you have some decent gear, it's still very terrible. Honestly, if there's one thing I can recommend in this guide, it's don't play bow at all, just go into Javazon, farm up some gear through magic finding, and then once you have all that gear, then switch over to bows. Even the Mage Zon bow build isn't as good as the Javazon build. If you want an easy time as an Amazon, Javazon is the key here. Don't go bow. But if you do insist on playing a bow Zon, then go the Mage Zon. Do not play multi-shot, strafe, and guided arrow. It's really not worth it until you have the best gear. Alright, we're going to take a look at the Javelin Amazon build here. You're going to start off going Poison Power, which is what I call this build personally, and you basically go Jab at level 2, and then from level 3 to 5, including your Den of Evil quest, you want to save all of those skill points. It's going to feel really weird having like 5 saved skill points and only 1 point into Jab, but trust me, this is the move that you want to make. The reason why is because once you're done with the Den of Evil, you want to buy a bunch of Javelins and then throw them. That's your main damage source, not using jab not melee attacks you want to simply throw your javelins 6 to 14 damage is a lot of damage especially when the amazon throws them quite fast now once you hit level 6 power strike and poison javelin are your two main skills so from level 6 all the way to level 18 every time you level up you should be spending two points one into power strike and one into poison javelin now once you hit level 18 you'll unlock charged strike and this is when you actually want to respec 
So once you respec, we will be going into the actual Javazon build, which is the Lightning Javelin skills. So at level 18, you'll put 1 point into Charge Strike and 1 point into Plague Javelin. After this, all of your points should be going into some kind of synergy to Charged Strike. So this will usually be Power Strike or Lightning Bolt or a mix of the two, as long as you're putting all of your points into those after you have your one point into Charged Strike. Now from level 19 onward, every point should be going into Charge Strike because this is your main damaging skill at this point. Now once you kill Iswal in Act 4, he's going to reward you with two skill points. Take these two skill points and put them into Critical Strike and Penetrate because these are required to unlock Pierce at level 30. When you hit level 29, save that skill point so that at level 30, you can unlock both Pierce and Lightning Fury. Now after this, you can either max Charged Strike or Lightning Fury. I recommend maxing Lightning Fury here after hitting level 30 because this is an amazing skill for killing a lot of monsters on your entire map, especially once you have Piercing. So max out Lightning Fury and then after this, finish off maxing Charged Strike. Now once you've maxed out Charged Strike and Lightning Fury, you want to put 1 point into Valkyrie which will take about 10 points to get to and you should have that at around level 60 or 61. After this, you can max out Power Strike, Lightning Bolt, and Lightning Strike as they are synergies to your Charge Strike and Lightning Fury. Now one thing I want to mention here because I'm sure I'm going to get a question on it, why is Valkyrie picked up so late? Well, Nightmare is so easy for the Javazon because you kill everything so quickly that you really don't need to get a Valkyrie right away. It's much better to max out your skills quickly so you can continue to two-shot everything all the way through Nightmare. Finally, we've got the stats here. You want to have 25 strength before you hit Act 2 so you can use the belt from Fara. Then you want 34 strength by level 21 because the shield you are going to use is going to be the Ancient's Pledge with the large shield. Now if you have a kite shield this actually has to be 47 strength not 34 strength. And finally we also have dexterity here which will come from your maiden javelin which is usually around level 17 or higher that requires 47 dexterity and the throwing spear once you get into nightmare if it has attack speed you might want to use a throwing spear which in that case is 65 dexterity but otherwise you do not need to get these stats super early you do not need 25 strength at level 4 just slowly build up to it before you get to say level 13 or so and dexterity you do not need to rush that either maybe hit level 7 17 and then start building into dexterity it's not a major rush that you need right away all right let's talk about the mage zone amazon build we're going to be leveling up as explosive arrow or what i like to call the tnt build where you go fire arrow from level 2 to 9 and your den of evil quest as well everything should be going into fire arrow because it's a synergy to explosive arrow now at level 10 you want to get magic arrow and at level 11 multiple shot that's because these two are required to unlock explosive arrow from here on forward, every point should be going into Explosive Arrow, and if you cannot put any points into it, it should go into Fire Arrow, since again, it's a synergy to Explosive Arrow. So you're going for pure damage here, you do not need Dodge, Avoid, Evade, or any other bow skills or anything like that, just go pure Fire Arrow, and then into Explosive Arrow, and then once you're ready for Nightmare, which is roughly around level 30 to 35, then you want to respec. Now we go into the actual Mage on build when you respec. Right away, you want to pick up one into Pierce and one into Valkyrie. This is going to be about 10 skill points spent to pick up your Valkyrie and your Piercing skill. The Piercing skill is going to be really great for doing extra bow damage because your Explosive Arrow can basically hit multiple targets at the same time, more than once basically. And then on top of that, your Valkyrie is going to be really important for keeping monsters away from you. So basically, your Valkyrie will tank just like your Mercenary. Now after this your main skill is switching off from Explosive Arrow into Freezing Arrow. So you want to max out Freezing Arrow right away and then put all of your spare points into Cold Arrow which it should be maxed if you're at least level 30. So with Freezing Arrow and Cold Arrow maxed what you want to now switch into with your skills is going into Immolation Arrow. So once you've built up to that Immolation Arrow start maxing it out and if you have any more spare skill points after this put it into Explosive Arrow since it's a synergy to Immolation Arrow. So basically, you're leveling up as Explosive Arrow, and then once you're ready for Nightmare, you switch over to Freezing Arrow, and then if there's a cold immunity, you want to actually use Immolation Arrow instead. But Freezing Arrow is your highest damaging skill and your main skill overall. The only time you want to switch over to Immolation Arrow is if there's a cold immunity. Otherwise, that's pretty much the Mazon build. Super simple. You use two skills. Very easy to pick up.
When it comes to the stats, all you really have to worry about is getting 28 dexterity right away at level 2 so that you have your hunter's bow equipped and then 25 strength by the time you hit act 2 just like every other class in the game and then finally the stag bow which you'll find in act 2 or later which is at least level 14 you want about 30 strength or 45 dexterity in order to equip that stag bow when you're ready to use it all right let's talk about normal act 1 now if you're a javazon buy a few stacks of javelins from charcy as soon as you complete the den of evil quest Make sure the javelins don't have any bonuses on them, such as attack rating, because this will make them much more expensive. Poison Javelin and Power Strike require level 6, so until then, most of your damage is going to come from throwing your javelins. Even though you only have 1 point into jab, it's not worth using because javelin's melee attack is very weak. The only time you should really jab or use melee with your javelin is in the Den of Evil at the beginning of the game, since the monsters are very weak. But after that, once you get into the areas like Blood Raven or Stony Field, you should really just start throwing your javelins. Now, Bozons, on the other hand, will want to buy a Hunter's Bow from Charcy if they didn't find one in the Den of Evil. If you can also get your hands on a Hunter's Bow with sockets, make sure to put rubies in it because fire damage from gear is added into the damage of Explosive Arrow's Explosive Impact. Whenever you're in town, also check Charcy for a two-socketed armor and two-socketed helmet if you don't have one already. The two-socketed armor will be used later to craft the stealth rune word, which is going to be your best armor going into Nightmare. The two-socketed helmet will be used for fire resistance against shamans, venom lords, and Diablo himself in Acts 3 and 4. Their fire skills are devastating if your fire resistance is low, so you'll want to socket this helmet with any Ralrins you happen to find. When you get to the Black Marsh, you'll want to start doing tower runs. A tower run is pretty simple. Just take the Black Marsh waypoint, find the Forgotten Tower, and kill the Countess on the last floor. The Countess is the best place to find runes this early into the game. Javazons will need a Tal rune and Eth rune to make the stealth rune word, but Bozons will want a second Eth rune for their Zephyr bow later. Before you engage Andoriel, drink a few antidote potions for increased poison resistance. And Doriel takes 50% more fire damage, so Bozons should have no problem dealing with her. She does have high poison resistance, however, so Javazons will want to use Power Strike against her instead of Poison Javelin. Now, if you take too much damage, just keep your distance while throwing Poison Javelins at her while you recover with healing potions. Even though she does have high poison res, Poison Javelin does a lot of damage that it's still actually impactful. The first thing you want to do when you reach Act 2 is buy a belt from Farah if you don't have one already. Next, hire a mercenary from Graze. Act 2 mercenaries are by far the best as they deal the most damage, can tank for you, and they provide an aura that buffs you and your party. The aura doesn't really matter for the Amazon in normal, so just hire the highest mercenary available, but if you really want one I recommend either combat or defensive because the prayer aura can heal you and defensive will just increase your defense. Javazons will want to check Farah for a 3 socket large shield or kite shield whenever they're in town. The 3 socket shield is used to make the Ancients pledge when you get to Act 5. Later in Act 2, Maiden Javelins and Stag Bows are going to start dropping, so keep an eye out for them because they always have at least 1 to 3 bow or javelin skills on them. Ideally, Bozons will want to find a 2 socket Stag Bow so they can make the Zephyr Rune word once they have an Ort Rune. But if you can't find a two socket stag bow at all, then I recommend making Zephyr in a composite bow or hunter's bow since they have the fastest attack speed. Before entering the chamber to face Duriel, give you and your mercenary a few thawing potions. The increased cold resistance will prevent you and your mercenary from getting two shotted by Duriel. It's very important for Bozons to keep their mercenary alive with rejuvenation potions so that he can continue to tank Duriel, otherwise it's going to be very difficult for you to get damage off since he will slow your attack speed and stun you constantly. Javazons you should have no problem since you can just poison Javelin at a distance or if you're already level 18 and have charge strike, you deal a lot of damage in the first place so you shouldn't really have too much difficulty. So now that you're in Act 3, Heratli should be right beside you. Buy a Poleaxe from him if your mercenary needs a new weapon. You can now start checking Ormus for a staff with teleport charges. 
The teleport staff helps get over annoying terrain, can be used to reposition yourself and your mercenary, and it helps speed up travel time, especially if you're doing magic find runs. If you don't have the gold for the staff right now, you can just shop one later in the other acts. If you're not level 23 by the time you reach Travancol in Act 3, then I recommend doing Temple Runs. To do a Temple Run, take the Karost Bazaar Waypoint and kill the boss pack inside the ruined temple. Continue doing this until you're level 23 or 24. This is important because you want to be at least 23 in Act 4 and at least 25 in Act 5 to avoid a severe experience penalty. For Mephisto, bosons can drag him down to the moat and then quickly run around to the other side or teleport across. This will cause Mephisto to get stuck on the river, and with enough distance, you should be able to kill him without him attacking you at all. Javazons will have to face him head on, however, so drink a few thawing and antidote potions to reduce his damage. For Diablo, bosons will take some time, but they can easily dodge his attacks. It's Javazons that should be concerned, because even though they can kill Diablo quickly, they're at risk since they have to be in melee range. Diablo's melee attacks will freeze you, and if he follows that up with a lightning breath, it's almost impossible to avoid. It's also really annoying because it slows your attack speed, so I recommend having a few thawing potions in your inventory or belt so that you can remove the freezing effect immediately. When you first get to Act 5, make sure you are at least level 25 and don't buy anything. The cost of everything in Act 5 is doubled until you complete the first quest, so you'll want to go back to Act 4 to buy your potions. Now, once you've killed Shank the Overseer to complete the first quest, the item prices will go back to normal, and you'll also unlock the ability to socket an item, which I recommend saving for later. Once you have the Frigid Highlands Waypoint, I recommend farming Eldritch for gold and experience. Bale runs are great, but not only is Eldritch more efficient experience and gold on single player, but they're also very quick, which is important because every time you leave and create a new game, you're going to want to check Mala for a wand with lower resist charges. Cursing bosses and boss packs with lower resist will significantly boost your elemental damage. The lower resist wand is level 36, so if you're below that, you can actually save time at the shop by only looking at the red wands since you can't equip it yet. Once you have a lower resist wand, now you can continue farming Eldritch for more experience, or you can move on to completing Act 5 and the normal difficulty. Moving on in Act 5, the second quest will give you three runes, Ral, Ort, and Tal. Javazons will want to take the three socket shield they bought earlier, and socket Ral, Ort, Tal to craft Ancient's Pledge. Ancient's Pledge is a significant resistance boost for your journey through Nightmare and Hell Mode. Bosons, on the other hand, do not use shields, so instead they'll want to use that Ort rune and socket Ort and Eth into a two-socketed bow to craft the Zephyr rune word. Once you reach the Ariat Summit, make sure to leave a town portal just outside in the Ancient's Way. Activating the Ancient's Fight removes all town portals in the summit, and if you open a town portal during the fight, the fight will reset, so you want your town portal outside just in case you die. Try to keep your mercenary alive with potions, so he can tank at least one of the Ancients. Javazons will want to kill Madoc last, because he has high lightning resistance. Bozons will want to kill Madoc first, because Talik and Korlik have high fire resistance. When you clear the throne room of monsters, Bale will laugh and five waves will spawn. Assuming you farmed Eldritch until at least level 30, you shouldn't have any issue with Bale's minions. If you do, however, just kite them out of the room as you slowly chip away at them. You can also skip these waves entirely by luring them out of the main throne room and then running back up. If the minions do not follow you back into the main room, the wave will skip and you will be able to fight the next one or go right to Bale. When you're fighting Bale, drink thawing potions beforehand to reduce his cold damage. By defeating Normal Bale, you can now open the Secret Cow level in Normal by cubing the Tome of Town Portal with Wurt's Leg in Act 1. At this point, you should be at least level 30, and if you're a Javazon, you can honestly go straight into Nightmare because Charge Strike is just super strong, but if you're a newer player or a Boson, then I recommend farming Normal Bale and Eldritch until at least level 35. Normal Bale and Eldritch runs can get you into the level 40s and even 50, so it's up to you when you're ready for Nightmare. So now that we're ready for Nightmare, let's take a look at some of the items and rune words that will help us get through the game. Lore is a rune word crafted by socketing Ort and Soul into a two-socketed helmet. 
this is a quick and easy way to get plus 1 to alt skills, lightning resistance, and damage reduction. Rhyme is a rune word crafted by socketing Shale and Eth into a 2 socketed shield. While Ancient's Pledge gives more resistances, Rhyme is great because the cannot be frozen effect will allow you to remove the slowing attack speed and movement speed when you're frozen. Peace is a rune word crafted by socketing Shale, Thal, and Am into a 3 socketed armor. Peace is the best choice because it gives 2 to all Amazon skills and has a chance to spawn a level 15 Valkyrie which is permanent as long as you have 1 point invested into it. Melody is a rune word crafted by socketing Shale, Ko, and Neff into a 3 socket ranged weapon. Most bow rune words don't deal a lot of damage, but because we're running a Mage Zon build which relies on skill points instead of actual bow damage, Melody becomes a solid bow choice because it has attack speed, knockback, and more importantly, plus 3 to bow skills. With a stag bow base, your Melody can get up to 6 bow skills. Insight is a rune word crafted by socketing Ral, Tear, Tal, and Soul into a 4 socketed polearm. Keep in mind, Insight cannot be crafted in Spears, which is a common rookie mistake. This is one of the best weapons for your mercenary early on due to its high damage and meditation aura which boosts your mana regeneration. If you have trouble finding a 4 socketed polearm in Nightmare, you may want to consider farming normal cows and then use your socket quest to give it 4 sockets. Strength is a rune word crafted by socketing Amn and Tear into a 2 socketed weapon. There will be a few bosses in Hell Mode, such as the Hell Ancients, where your mercenary having Crushing Blow can make the fight significantly easier, so you might want to craft a strength for your mercenary for those specific fights. Treachery is crafted by socketing Shale, Thal, and Lem into a 3 socketed armor. The Venom proc adds 300 poison damage to melee attacks, and the Fade proc increases all resistances by 60, as well as a hidden 15% physical damage reduction bonus. This makes Treachery one of the best armors for mercenaries and a decent option for Amazons if they want to sacrifice the 2 to Amazon skills and Valkyrie for more resistance and attack speed. Other than the Lem and Co runes, the runes required for these items drop quite commonly from the Nightmare Countess, so if you want a lot of these rune words as quick as possible, farming Nightmare Tower is going to be your best bet. Also, the vendors in Nightmare will start selling javelins and gloves with attack speed, so if you want an easy upgrade, you can quickly check the vendors whenever you're in town. Once you get to Nightmare Act 2, I recommend replacing your mercenary with a new one. Amazon should hire a defensive Nightmare Act 2 merc because his Holy Freeze aura will slow the attack speed and movement speeds of enemies around him, making it much easier to keep your distance from them as well as reducing the amount of damage you and your mercenary take. Most bosses shouldn't be too difficult in Nightmare, but Duriel might be a little difficult for the boson. The easiest strategy to use against any difficult boss or monster is to recast Decoy and Valkyrie the moment they die. As long as your Decoy and Valkyrie are up, you shouldn't be targeted at all. Remember to curse them with lower resist to significantly increase your elemental damage. When you get to Act 5, I highly recommend doing Eldritch runs just like in normal, until at least level 60. You can try and do the Ancients at level 40 and run Nightmare Bales instead, but it's going to take much longer and be much more difficult especially if you're a boson. Nightmare Ancients requires level 40 to complete. I recommend running to a corner as soon as you start the fight and then teleport across or run around to the other side once you see them. Creating this distance will hopefully cause only one or two of the Ancients to follow you making the fight much easier. You'll want to kill either Korlik or Talik first because both of them have zero cold and lightning resistances, whereas Medok has both of those resistances. Also, if Talik is too close to the edge of the summit, this will disable his ability to Whirlwind, so keep that in mind. Bale's minions shouldn't be too much of an issue, especially if you already farmed out your levels from Eldritch. Just keep your decoy and Valkyrie alive and kite them out of the room if you have to. I recommend doing Nightmare Bale and Eldritch runs until at least level 65 before going into Hell Mode. I handled Hell Mode at level 60 with my Javazon and at least level 66 with my Bozon because she really needed the extra skills for Immolation Arrow to do a little bit more damage. Nightmare Bales can get you to around level 78, so feel free to continue farming for loot and experience. If you're looking to find some better gear before going into Hell Mode, here are some of the items I would recommend. You can find these from Nightmare Mephisto, Nightmare Diablo, and Nightmare Bale. 
The skin of the Viper Magi is a great armor for the resistances, one to all scales, and the faster cast helps with teleporting. For Bozons, we have Lycander's Aim and Bariza. For the Javazon, we have the Titan's Revenge. In terms of rings, we have Ravenfrost and Dwarf Star. The last item you might want to pick up before going into Hell Mode is gloves with 20% attack speed along with 3 to bow skills or 3 to javelin skills. You can actually buy these gloves off a vendor. All you have to do is be around level 68 to 71. I believe it's around that level. If I'm incorrect, I will add it into the screen here. You can see it. It will uh, correct me. But I'm pretty sure level 68 to 71 is the best chance to find golden looking gloves. And that will tell you right there, 20% increased attack speed and hopefully a chance at 3 to bow skills or 3 to javelin skills. And the best way to shop these as quick as possible is to use Anya in Act 5. First of all, do not grab the Halls of Pain waypoint. If you grab the Halls of Pain waypoint, it will close the portal to Neolithok's temple. The reason why you don't want that is because you want to go to Anya, check the gloves she sells, and if you don't find them, take the portal, go back to town, and this will refresh Anya's items to sell. And you want to do this, and this can honestly take you hours or 30 minutes, depending on your luck, but you want to basically keep going through the portal and checking Anya, and hopefully you'll get 2 to Javelin, or 3 to Javelin, or Bow, of course, if your Bow's on, and then 20 increased attack speed. All right, guys, we're going to take a look at my Bozons items here. We've got three to bow skills on the gloves. We've got some random rings here. A Sigon's belt for life and resistances. Life leech, mana leech, not a big deal. Life, faster run walk, and fire resistance. One to Amazon skills for that damage and resistances. The lore, the peace, and the big ol' melody. If you don't have a melody, the Zephyr might be good enough. It, you will have to take a lot more shots because you will have a lot less damage, but... Honestly, Melody or Zephyr should be okay. Uh, for the Mercenary, we've got a Treachery here, a Insight, or an Insight, I should say, and, of course, a Worm Skull here for the Life Leech here. So, overall, that's the Boson. For the Javazon, we have some basic gloves with attack speed. We have some random rings. We have a Throwing Spear here with attack speed, a Lore. We've got ourselves the Peace again here. Just your typical items here, just like the Boson. Very cheap, budget-looking gear. Very easy to make. The same amulet I transferred over from the Boson. Actually, my Javazon I made first, then I transferred to the Boson. We've got the Rhyme here for the Cannot Be Frozen. Sanders, and as I mentioned a second ago, Random Rings, and a Talrash's Belt I found for the Dexterity and Magic Find. Honestly, just completely budget gear. The Mercenary is the same thing. Treachery, Insight, and I believe the Worm Skull for the Life Leech there, as uh, we can see here in the clip. Yep, Treachery, the Insight, and the Worm Skull here. So, like, honestly, just typical budget kind of, like, gear. You don't need a whole lot on the Amazon. Uh, even the Boson, if you're going Mage Zone, you don't need a lot of gear. It's just still weaker compared to Bow or uh, Javelin. So, like, really, not too much difference there. Uh, pretty budget gear overall. All right, so when it comes to Hell Mode, the biggest issue for the Amazon is immunities. Javazons will have to skip monsters that are lightning immune, and Bozons will have to be patient with Immolation Arrow if they want to kill cold immunes. The first main challenge for the Bozon is going to be Duriel. Duriel kills your decoy, Mercenary, and Valkyrie way too fast, even if you curse him with the Life Tap Wand. However, there are two strategies you can use. The first one is to constantly cast Decoy in between a couple of arrows, even if the Decoy is already alive, because you don't want Duriel to kill it instantly and then take 1 or 2 seconds to come after you. It's better safe than sorry to keep respawning Decoy. The second strategy is to glitch Duriel on the wall. To glitch Duriel, run to the top of the room, and when he gets into melee range, quickly run to the bottom right near the ruined object. If you stand where I'm standing, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can kind of see. If you stand in this general area, once he gets into melee range to attack you, take a few steps to the right, and hopefully this causes him to get stuck on the object. This is going to probably take you a lot of attempts, so I really only recommend this if you just can't be Duriel the normal way. Travancol in Act 3, in general for that matter, is going to be the really painful part of the Javazon due to so many monsters being immune to lightning. The Zealots in the surrounding area and most of the council members are immune to lightning, so I recommend creating new games over and over until you get a Travancol where there's hardly any monsters around and Torque Ice Fist is at the front. 
The reason why you want Torque Ice Fist specifically is because he is the one that drops Kaleem's flail. So if you can lure him away from the rest of the council members, you can kill him alone, take the flail, craft it, and then quickly sneak in and smash the orb. You won't have to clear the entire Travancore quest at this point if you're able to do this, and you can just head down and kill Mephisto and then proceed to Act 4. However, if you don't want to do this little skip here and you actually want to complete the quest, then you're going to have to try and fight each council member one at a time. Lower resist should be able to break the lightning immunities for the most part, but your damage is going to be very low. Using a life tap wand to keep your mercenary alive while he does damage is another option you can use. However, you got to make sure that he survives, so that life tap wand is really important, and he needs enough damage to actually be able to kill them. Bozons, on the other hand, should be able to kill most of the council without too much issue, but they will have to use their mercenary and Valkyrie to kill Torque Ice Fist, since he's immune to both cold and fire. You might want to use a life tap wand here just to make sure your merc survives, and also both Amazon builds want to make sure that any Hierophants around should be killed because they can heal the council members straight to full. When it comes to the Chaos Sanctuary, start with Infector of Souls at the bottom right seals first, and then Lord Desays at the top right seals afterwards. This order is important because these two seal guardians can spawn with two immunities. Hopefully your mercenary is strong enough to kill them, otherwise you're going to have to make a new game if they're immune to your skills. For the Hell Ancients, you need to be at least level 60 in order to complete it. Before you start the fight, drop a lot of potions on the ground just in case you need them and equip your mercenary with any items that have Crushing Blow because Crushing Blow deals massive damage to bosses. When you spawn the Ancients, quickly mouse over them and check their modifiers. For Javazons, you don't want any Ancients with Mana Burn, Spectral Hit, and Lightning Enchanted. For Bozons, you don't want any Ancients with Mana Burn and Spectral Hit. Once you've spawned them, run to a corner, and as soon as they appear, teleport across or run around to the other side so you only have to fight one or two at a time. You may want to use Life Tap instead of Lower Resist so that your mercenary can survive tanking the Ancients. Another strategy you can use is to bug your mercenary in Act 1 so that he doesn't take any damage from the Ancients. To bug your mercenary, take the Inner Cloister Waypoint, go to the top, and go down into the Jail Level 3. Coming back up, you want to close the door behind you so your mercenary is trapped in the little hallway area. Move away from him so that he completely disappears on the map, and when he reappears, he should be able to be bugged now so he doesn't take any damage. This is important if you need to keep your mercenary alive so that he can get the free crushing blow hits if you have that strength rune word or any other items with crushing blow. Once you get to Bale's throne room, the experience isn't that much different from Nightmare to where you just simply keep your decoy active, keep your Valkyrie alive, and you should be able to kill most of the waves. Bale isn't too much different either, you just simply sit there with lower resist curse, and you simply chip away with your freezing arrow and your javelin skills with charge strike. After this, you should be able to have hell mode done, you should have no problem. Honestly, Boson is not really enjoyable, I don't recommend it, but it is there, it's not too too bad it's just kind of on the low end of most builds but overall i hope you guys enjoyed this guide i leveled two amazons one was exactly like the javzon build i have here for you guys and the other one was exactly like the boson build i have here for you as well now physical bosons don't do it i have to say it again do not do it i hope you guys enjoyed this guide and i'll see you hopefully on my next one i'll see you guys Greetings. I am impressed, Mordred. You have overcome the greatest challenge this world has ever faced and defeated the last of the Prime Eves. However, we are too late to save the World Stone. Bale's destructive touch has corrupted it completely. Given enough time, the World Stone's energies will drain away, and the barriers between the worlds will shatter. The powers of Hell will flood into this sanctuary, and eradicate your people and everything you've labored to build. Therefore, I must destroy the corrupted World Stone before the powers of Hell take root. This act will change your world forever, 
with consequences even I cannot foresee. However, it is the only way to ensure mankind's survival. Go now, mortal. I have opened a portal that will lead you to safety. May the eternal light shine upon you and your descendants for what you've done this day. The continued survival of mankind is your legacy. Above all else, you have earned a rest from this endless battle. Thank you.